think that we will find ourselves increasingly dependent on telerobotic systems. Suppose you have a remote surgery system. If a third party were to take over that system or interrupt it, it becomes a weapon or it could be a disaster. Here at the University of Washington in Seattle, a group of researchers is investigating the security of teleoperated surgical robots, machines that a doctor could use to perform a procedure on a patient the other side of the world. In the future, these robots could provide urgent care to people in disaster zones, on the battlefield, or even up in space. But the long distance between the human operator and the robot means that communications between the two could be vulnerable to attack. We met the team at the Biorobotics Lab to find out how easy it is to hack robots like this and what they're doing to stop it. The Raven 2 is a teleoperated surgical robot controlled by a haptic interface, which means you can direct its movements remotely. Blake Hannaford, one of the robot's designers, told us how the project began. Well, uh, we started with the military. They wanted uh, a system that could fit inside an armored vehicle in the combat zone. And so that drove us to make it much smaller than other systems that are out there. And as we did that, uh, we realized it was a really good platform for doing research to advance the software, the control, and things like network security for medical robotics. So we just want to get out in front of the hackers there are many places where you don't want to send humans. Uh, underwater, biohazardous area, high temperature firefighting, toxic, radioactive, mining, space. And, and if you're sending a robot but you still want the human in control, then you have this communication link and there's the potential that it can be compromised. So you want to keep that safe and secure. Tamara Bonacci is an electrical engineer at the Biorobotics Lab. She's been finding ways to hack the Raven in order to figure out what security features we might need to include in teleoperated medical devices. Can I have a go? For sure, yeah. Let, let me tell you how, how it works and what you will need to do. So uh, please take a seat at our nice surgical chair. And then these 3D glasses. The way you're sending the commands, you will use this haptic interface. OK, here we go. I'm going down. I'm going to try and move it across onto this peg here. Ooh, ooh. Yes, born natural. <laughs> I'm definitely not delicate enough to have this inside someone's body. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like a claw machine where you're trying to win a cuddly toy, but a lot smaller. <laughs> and it's strange because when you're looking at the screen here, you almost forget that the actual robot is over there. It's like playing a video game. So I can see how it doesn't really make much difference if the robot is right behind me or if it's the other side of the world, because all I'm concentrating on is this. It's the distance between the operator and the robot that makes it more vulnerable to attack. As the signals travel across different networks, they could be intercepted. One of the main types of hack Tamara has tried on the Raven is a man-in-the-middle attack where she disrupts the communication between the user and the robot when they think they're in direct contact. I'm going to try and control this robot again, and then Tamara is going to hack me and show me how difficult it is to control when I don't have control. <laughs> OK, let's make this harder on you. Oh, OK, I can immediately notice that something has happened. And I've already dropped one. As an attacker, you would listen on the communication over a network. You would try to identify the traffic between a robot and a surgeon. You would try to trick the robot to think that it is talking to the surgeon when it actually isn't. It's actually talking to an attacker, and vice versa, same for the surgeon. For example, you can start blasting some empty messages, packets to the communication network in order to sort of pause the delay. So there's a delay between what I'm doing with my fingers and what's happening on the screen, which makes it very hard to judge when to close the little pincers. 
But in addition to these attacks, there are more sophisticated and severe attacks that can certainly be mounted where one would exploit the features of the software or of the hardware of the robot. Such a simple thing with such a severe impact on the robot. It's really frustrating. It's very annoying. The effect is quite subtle, but the impact is very noticeable. This might be a very sort of sophisticated way of trying to harm the person or even kill the person without anyone ever knowing that that happened. So you could do kind of a really subtle assassination attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost sounds like some kind of sci-fi thriller, this idea of hacking into telerobotic systems that are being controlled in space. How realistic is it that a hacker would actually want to do that? Well. People have already, as demonstrations, hacked into insulin pumps and pacemakers and automobiles. So how realistic is that? It wasn't a sophisticated hack, but when you've got a robot doing something as delicate as surgery, even the slightest wrong move could have a devastating effect. The good thing is, this robot isn't operating on people just yet. And unlike what happened with the internet, these researchers are trying to find the vulnerabilities before the bad guys can even look for them. So hopefully, when the robots take over our surgeries, we won't have to worry about assassination by hacker.